ladies 13 14 800 freestyle relay heat two of two in lane number one crow canyon b squad lane two palo alto lane three crow canyon a squad lane four irvine nova lane five pleasanton seahawks lane six nova of virginia lane seven edmonton keanu and in lane number eight steiner youth Fifty yards through leg number one. The heat is very competitive here. Almost a straight line across the board. Ladies out between twenty-six mids and twenty-seven high. Up next, we'll take a look at the thirteen fourteen fellas two hundred four by two hundred freestyle relay, and then on to some fifty sprints in the four by fifty relay. Halfway through leg number one, that is the Pasta Squad out in front, flipping at a 55-84 for their leadoff leg. She's followed by lane number five, that's Pleasanton Seahawks, also out in a 56 mid. Great leadoff leg here for Palo Alto in lane number two. She is followed by the leadoff for Pleasanton Seahawks and rounding out third place here in leg number one and three is Crow Canyon. Crow Canyon here has two squads in the final eight in lanes one and three. But the touch goes to Palo Alto, 154-7-3, followed with a 155-6 for Pleasanton Seahawks and a one 58-0 for the leadoff in lane number three. That's Crow Canyon. So we're going to announce the high point winners, the top three, and you can pick up your awards at the awards desk. We're going to start with the 10 under girls in third place with 48 points from Santa Clara, Ramey Jones. And in the background, we hear them announcing the high point here for Far Westerns. Ramey Jones with the high point award. For the ladies, 10 and under high point winner, Taylor Ruck right behind her. And what a head-to-head -head battle Ramey Jones and Taylor Ruck went throughout the course of this meet. One of our, one of our two we spoke about head-to-head -head battles in the different age groups earlier today. And Ramey Jones and Taylor Ruck already at the young age of 10 going head-to-head. -head. So they have many years to come where I'm not sure this is the end of their, end of their racing. Yeah, but also in that age bracket was Vivian Wang who won three different events today. One of our triple winners on the day, so she made a late surge to try to get after that high points award, but a very stacked age group for those 10 and under girls. That's great, and it just shows the promise we have here for our 10 and under ladies. Leg number two still in the water. We've had a change in leadership in five. That's Pleasanton Seahawks who have gained the lead there. 50 yards left to go, I believe. And we have a great race for second going on. Lane number two, that is Palo Alto. Lane three moving in Crow Cannon. And up there in the top of your screen in lane number seven is Edmonton turning it on here in leg number two. What an impressive second leg we've had from these other squads who are now in the running. At the halfway mark, that is Pleasanton Seahawks out front into the water. 351-54 at the halfway into the water. Second and seven is Edmonton. 354-56, and in third in lane number three is Crow Canyon. Pleasanton still out in front, but trying to run them down up there in lane number seven is the team from Edmonton, and before this session started, I saw kind of an interesting session taking place in the hospitality room with the officials kind of quizzing some of the Edmonton swimmers about their impressions of their first American meet. And it was just it was interesting to see all the different things that the Edmonton team has had to face this weekend. Their meter times, putting them in the first heat of all of their events. 
um, is one of the factors. Swimming yards for the first time is another big adjustment that these Edmonton kids had to make. The level and the depth of competition has been a huge deal for them as well. Uh, not to mention just swimming outside. I don't think there are too many outdoor pools in Canada, let alone in Edmonton, in Alberta, Canada. So uh, they had a lot of different adversity to face, but it was so cool that this meet is now an international meet, getting teams from all across the world and uh, you know up there in Edmonton making the trip down. I know that they took some time and trained at Palo Alto for the last couple of weeks. So it's fun to have some international flavor even if it is our next door neighbors to the north. Agreed, you bring a lot of great points up, Garrett, and I think that's so cool that at such a young age they are able to have such an eye-opening experience. A lot of our little young Americans would, great, would benefit from going and swimming over in other countries. Rounding out leg number three, it is still Pleasanton Seahawks out front by almost a half a pool length into the water, and second now is Crow Canyon. Up there on the top of your screen in lane number seven is still Edmonton. Well, this one's Pleasanton. It's been that way from the start, and they don't look like they're going to give up any room here. Although you don't know, yesterday we saw the Pleasanton team on the guy's side get run down in that, uh, I believe it was the 400 freestyle relay, or was it the 200 freestyle relay last night? Garrett, yeah, we've seen or so many two races, nights it's ago. hard to recall. But I think it was the 400 freestyle relay two nights ago that Pleasanton dominated all but the final five yards of, and Pasa was able to run them down because the tactic for Pleasanton was put the big horses up front. The tactic for P Pasa was to leave those studs for the end. So, 100 yards left to go, and Pleasanton Seahawks are looking very strong at this point. Apologies for not having the names of these swimmers in the water, but Pleasanton Seahawks out front in the second place position is Crow Canyon in lane number three, still holding off third in lane number seven is Edmonton. Or rather, yeah, I think that's correct. Lane number two staying in the game is Palo Alto. 50 yards left to go for your leaders out front, Pleasanton Seahawks. They're going to turn at a 7.14.77. They are entered at a 7.54.99. So they will be under their seed time for sure here with 25 yards left to go. And your champion in the girls 13, 14, 800 freestyle relay will be the ladies of Pleasanton Seahawks touching with a 7, 43, 22, and they are very excited about that time. Coming in for second in lane number three is Crow Canyon with a 1, 56, 0, 3. And for third in lane number seven is Edmonton, 758-93. And I believe that was a new Far Western's record for the Pleasanton Seahawks in lane number five. Yeah, that's the word on deck here. That was a new Far Western's record, a great way to end the weekend for those ladies. That is, of course, unless they're coming up in that 200 freestyle relay, which we will see soon. Yeah. 